Welcome back to CLI's Legalpreneur Spotlight Future 50 series. In this series, we're showcasing thought leaders and doers in the legal innovation and legal tech space around the world. Today, I'm joined by Zach Posner to chat about the Legal Tech Fund. Zach is the general partner and co-founder of the Legal Tech Fund. You can see why Zach does what he does. 15 plus years experience working with early stage companies as a CEO and in the venture and angel investing space and layered into that, a background in finance, strategy, and business development. Perfect. Zach, a huge welcome to CLI in this series. It's great to have you. Thank you for having me. Absolute pleasure. I wanted to jump straight in to um, info about the Legal Tech Fund and, and with a quick overview um, with kind of a bunch of questions together. Um, when did you and why did you found the Legal Tech Fund and who's behind it? Absolutely. So, um... I founded the Legal Tech Fund. It, it was something that kind of emerged out of COVID. It, it, it was going into COVID as a concept and came out as a, uh, well, hopefully we're out, <laughs> yes. as a fully formed and fully raised fund that is um, actively investing with over 30 investments to date. Um, all of the different characteristics that you mentioned of my prior operating experience and investing experience brought me to say, hey, th this is kind of where I want to be full time. Yeah. I think... Um, I had actually spent a lot of time since 2015 on thinking about and investing and participating in this space. And uh, that, that's what kind of compelled me there. Who's behind it? My, um, you know, it's a team of uh, six of us right now. My co-founder, we have um, a couple, uh, just kind of a couple operating partners, an amazing team of investors, folks with a... Um, you know, experience doing everything from uh, Mike, one of our venture partners, was the president of Thompson Reuters Legal Business, to Bill, who was the CTO of Blackstone, to Casey, who spent years um, in financial due diligence and in corporate M&A, to Nate, that is just, um, and this, maybe this is just a plug, everybody go to legaltech.com and sign up for <laughs> Nate's it's got a monthly newsletter that's spectacular. I've signed up, I've signed up. <laughs> he's, he, he, he's, uh, he literally goes through thousands of articles on a monthly basis and just kind of absorbs all of this stuff and is a machine when it comes to this stuff. Wow. But, uh, you know, that that's a basic overview of the team. Great. A great combination of skill sets. It sounds like they're kind of uh, complementary in many respects as well, right? Yeah. It, it, yeah. And it enables us to kind of um, be able to help our entrepreneur, entrepreneurs yeah. with kind of all the different challenges that they come up with and and just you know, you, I'm sure we'll talk more about it, but everything we do is in service of just accelerating our entrepreneurs. Yeah, absolutely. And Zach, a, a little more on your investors, because I think that's kind of fairly fascinating as well. Yep. Um, either naming names or, or kind of what's the profile of them? Yeah, so the, the, the underlying profile of pretty much all of our investors is this concept of they're all strategic. And when mm -hmm. we think of the word strategic, we, we think of, you know, folks that can help to accelerate the portfolio and, you know, the the people that raise their hand to invest and to help a venture fund are the ones that are very interested in kind of accelerating the future. Mm. So, you know, I, I, I'd say there's kind of um, two different cohorts. There, there's kind of really forward thinking law firms. So, so for us, our one of our anchor investors was a law firm called McDermott Will Emery that's kind of mm -hmm. practiced across the globe. Um, and then another firm, Oric, that's been a spectacular partner that's a really tech-oriented and tech-focused firm. Mm -hmm. And then the other is more um, traditional corporations that kind of, um, that most people may not associate with legal tech, but if you think about what their underlying products do, they're very much legal tech-oriented. So, you know, a couple of examples there are DocuSign, Mm. which is something that we believe has changed every Absolutely. dimension, yeah. you know, and, and then this, another one is a company called Carta, which is, um, you know, a pretty big software player that helps companies manage their equity stack and their cap tables. And, you know, again, this is, this is stuff that this software is now helping out companies thousands, hundreds, I mean, just thousands of thousands of them across the globe. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of work that lawyers used to do. And now lawyers are actually administrators of this software mm -hmm. and they're involved in the process as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, again, a, a great collaboration story there in terms of your investors as well. Uh, and, and it's kind of a great segue to the next question that I wanted to ask you, which is 
Um, there are a lot of VCs out there uh, and you've touched on this, but I wanted to explore this a little bit more. What's unique about the Legal Tech Fund, do you think? You know, yes, there's an extraordinary amount of VCs out there, almost to the point where capital is almost a commodity. So for us, you know, our goal is to, you know, we're really the only early stage fund in the in the world with this like straight thematic focus. This is all that we do. And as you can mention, as you can see by just some of the names we mentioned, mm -hmm. for us, this whole thing is kind of like a flywheel where we are interested in going to find, um, you know, the best early stage companies in the world. We want to bring them into our community. We want to help to accelerate their work. You know, we like to say we invest capital into companies. And of course, people think about that as financial capital, but there's also this like human capital concept mm -hmm. that says, hey, how can we bring our know-how, our partners, our, our our team's experience to help accelerate these companies? And then how can we also extend that to not only our investors, but the larger community of folks where we are out there talking to, you know, hundreds of strategic partners to our companies on a annual basis? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we mentioned a few of these places, but we are talking to, I mean, there, there's countless advisors to our fund mm. that include innovation heads at law firms, chairman of law firms, general counsels, chief legal officers, heads of legal ops. Um, you know, you, the, the list just goes on and on and on, but this is all that we do. We are not trying to cover five or 10 different verticals. We are not also saying that we are a uh, we're investing in the next social network because we're not. Yeah, you know we're not eligible for every company in the world, but what we like to think is for the companies that we are eligible for, we're the best investor they can possibly have, and we work as hard as we can to be just that. What um, really stands out to me as you were speaking is that there is kind of a vibe almost around community and collaboration in all that you're doing, and and that to me is is different and and also that your focus is on early stage startups because that's that's not you don't see that that often do you it's more kind of pushing into the scale up space yeah you really don't I, and i think you know for us i use this word community because i think that we're not only focusing on our startups but you know we talk to a lot of companies hundreds of companies that we're not going to invest in Mm -hmm. And when we're talking, like the, the question isn't just how we get rid of them. The question is really, how can we help every company that we interact with? Yeah. You know, we believe, and, and we believe that if we just do good things, kind of one day, good things will kind of come back to us. Yeah. But from our end, this is much more than, um, you know, just our companies. This is how, about how we advance an entire space. Yeah, and absolutely. And we're thrilled to be sitting in the center of all of this. Yeah, Fantastic. You, you spoke a little bit about the sort of companies that um, you're investing in. Um, I wanted to kind of uh, discuss that a little bit more. Like, where are they generally located? And um, if, if this is the right terminology, um, what's the typical investment look like in terms of dollars and support? And I know you've touched on a couple of those, but I just wanted to drill into that a little bit more. So there are located across the globe okay um 14 minutes ago i actually uh signed uh that we just signed a uh some documents with a company in australia actually that Yay! we're extremely excited about <laughs> um the from a dollar size so we we're a little bit different than a lot of venture funds that you hear about they have a they're focused at a very specific stage of a company's life cycle so they may just be a seed investor or an yeah. a investor or b investor or an angel or whatever it is we we're kind of agnostic and we go mm -hmm. all the way to from like inception through a series a okay so the actual quantum of dollars changes pretty you know that it, it, it depends on the, the size of the company etc and then i think that in other support i mean besides the financial side and no matter what that dollar investment is mm -hmm. We are helping these companies in any way that we possibly can. Mm -hmm. So there's the logical stuff is to saying, hey, how can we introduce these entrepreneurs more broadly to our community? Mm -hmm. How can we help them accelerate on the customer side? How can we help them accelerate on the biz dev side? How can we accelerate them on the corp dev side? Mm -hmm. That's all like stuff that 
you know, is community oriented, but flip side, you know, when we deal with some of these earlier stage companies, they have not necessarily, they don't have a financial model built. Yeah. We're glad to roll up our sleeves and build that for them. Yeah. We want to work with them on their uh, pitch deck. How do they tell their story to customers? How do you like constantly iterate on that? We want to help them on product. But again, all of this is kind of company, it, you know, it's it, it's it's based upon what the company needs. And yeah. companies need different things at different stages. But the whole purpose of our fund is to be here to help these companies at every stage and really help them as much as we possibly can. Yeah. So it's almost really a customization for the folks that you invest in. And I guess you're drawing on that, you know, as we were saying earlier, that really deep skill set that you've got internally and from your investors as well. Yeah, it, it, it is and it isn't. I mean, it's the same types of concepts that a lot of these companies go through. Sure. You know, in the early days, you're trying to tease out and demonstrate our customers engaged in a meaningful way mm. and what you can do and what some of the best practices look like there to make that happen. You know, then you transition from there to, all right, do we have the right business model? Are we able to generate revenue? And then you want to say, okay, how do we like crank that up and <laughs> do that a lot? But I, so I think that it's the same types of things, but yeah, directionally, if you've you know, if you dropped in on a day in the life of, you would see what would appear to be 20 customized plans. But yeah, the reality is it's the same activities that companies go through at different stages, depending on where they are in their life cycle. Yeah, absolutely. You touched on earlier the fact that the, the fund kind of came to life in a way during COVID. So I wonder because you, you're in the you're in the box seat. I think for for this question that I want to ask you, which is, um, how has investment and development of legal tech progressed um, or not? I guess is is the other part of this question. Kind of pre, during, and now, um, as you were saying, and I hope as well, hopefully post COVID as well. So I, I think that those trends, I, I, I think there's, um, I think 80% of what happened to legal tech in the last couple of years is maybe 70% is is kind of related to just general trends you're seeing in technology. Mm. You know, that there's big trends like work from home is now a thing and, you know, companies have to be prepared for that. But all of that happened in, in lots of different verticals. I think the 30% differentiator in legal is that legal you know, there's two things that one legal was behind. Hmm. So sure. there was more ground to catch up on. And then two was, there's a lot of policies that have historically restricted the growth and, and, and kind of what can get done in the legal space. And a lot of those barriers have come down a little bit. Hmm. I'll give you some simple ones. In the US, we went into a scenario, we went into the pandemic. And my guess is, you know, 10 to 15 states would enable you to do things like online notarization. Mm -hmm. And that is now basically moved up to, I think we're at north of 40 right now in the last year. That's great. And and now they're talking about some sort of federal law that would make it legal in all states. Mm -hmm. Like that's just an example of something like from a policy perspective mm -hmm. that was would put up roadblocks before that's changed. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I would say that the, a lot of it was just, and when I say, um, you know, you, you use the word, you talked about it, but that's like advancement of the space yeah, and the technology, sure. but you talked about this concept of investment mm -hmm. and in, in investment, the same thing. I mean, mm -hmm. that that's kind of, you saw all of these technology companies gaining some, you know, gaining a lot of traction with investment and venture investment and what's happened mm -hmm. there. And you saw a big run up until a couple of months ago, where it seems like things are slowing down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, but that's more correlated to the public markets. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like all this stuff just kind of rolls downhill where now it's starting to hit some of the earlier stage stuff. Yeah, But these absolutely. are normal cycles that you see. Um, the difference is, I think, in legal, there was a lot more room for things to uh, to grow a little bit and to build some momentum on the tech side. Yeah, certainly opportunities and probably really a need to grow a lot faster in the beginning just to meet the needs and demands that were created by COVID, I guess, for legal. Yeah. I mean, we, we did, um, we did a fun piece. We did a couple of fun pieces that I have to dig up that we're just talking about. Like the first couple of weeks 
were insane for what was happening to some of these companies. I mean, this yeah. was all stuff that, you know, people were taking meetings about the software and they're like, yeah, mm-hmm. okay, thank you. And then I guess in the back of their mind, they thought this was like four or five years away. Yeah. And then all of that stuff just like disappeared and got just whoosh, accelerated. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> That's right. We need it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I I I um I saw that you're launching your first summit in the US in December, uh, which is great and congratulations. Um, Thank you. why why was it important for you to do that? So, I think it comes back to this concept of cultivating the community. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of massive um conferences and things in this space, but no place for the CEOs to come together with the investing community and kind of like the thought leader cus thought leading customers in a couple day offsite type of environment where you're talking about where the future of all of this stuff is going. You know, usually you're sitting in front of a big, um, you know, a a massive conference room or a a massive room with a couple thousand people or you're on the exhibit hall somewhere. And, And these are like sales oriented shows where the sales teams and the marketing teams are trying to achieve their goals. We saw all of this activity and we said, wow, if we can bring people together, this will facilitate more business development deals. This will facilitate corporate development. Then. And we just sat there and we're like, these are the stakeholders we talk to every single day. What happens if we bring some of our friends together? Mm. And I, I think you're going to get something spectacular that we're really excited about. I I think it's great. I mean, um, there's a place and a necessity, of course, for the sales and the demos, but it tends to be almost how legal tech is defined at these conferences. And the thing I loved about your event was that it's really um, future focused. It really is thinking about what's coming down the pipeline and why and getting some feedback and having some real conversations about that. So um, yeah, I think it's going to be a fantastic event. And again, congratulations on that. And, and remember, um, we're we're early stage investors. So the types right. of stuff, you know, we hope that we're going to be featuring these early stage companies. Yeah. You know, we actually have a startup challenge where we're bringing them together. They'll get time on the stage, these early stage companies. But yeah. these are things that we're not trying to figure out what to sell you in 30 days. Yes. Like these are like, you know, these are going to be your next generation of companies that are going to yeah. come to fruition in five, 10, 15 years. Yeah. So it's, the, you know, there's a cohort of folks that I think, you know, are really interested in understanding what that world can look like. Yes. Because if they can get a sneak peek, they can, uh, you know, be a part of it opposed to being left behind it. So. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, it, and it kind of, again, segues into the next question I wanted to ask you, which is doing a little bit of that forward thinking and looking and particularly for the future of legal tech. Where, where do you think it is? Is it is it going to be focused on specific areas of legal work or in certain geographies or what are the vendor and buyer profiles going to look like? So it's a big, it's a big question, but what I'm kind of asking you really is what does the marketplace in a way of legal tech look like in the future? So I'll give you a little bit of a, a controversial one that I don't think a lot yeah. of people that, that, that we get really excited about. We get excited when kind of the end buyer looks like a business unit because the software is going to transform the business unit. Mm. But when you get the business unit right and data gets structured in and around agreements at the business unit level, Mm. that changes the roles and the responsibilities of everybody upstream. So that means that if historically they'd be working with the legal team, well, maybe the software can take some of that help out. Mm. And then the internal legal team can be thinking about a higher level you know, issues. Yeah. And then at the same time, if that work used to go to an outside firm, you know, that changes as well. So the thing that we're looking for, the things that kind of, I mean, we, we look at software that, I mean, look, we, we look high level, we look at three different buckets, software that enables law firms, software that enables clients and software that enables the regulatory ecosystem. Yeah. But when you think about this specific software, that's powering the business units or the clients, mm. um, you get neat things because you get the opportunity to like change the the roles and the responsibilities of everybody around it. Mm-hmm. Like DocuSign is a great example of that. Yeah. Where if you just think about how many people used to touch a signature block or some signature, um, you know, or, or, or hand paper, you know, literally paper. Yes. <laughs> and um, 
you know, what DocuSign has done for that process, you know, you now have signatures that are collected all the way up and down and all through some software and it enables people to not necessarily focus on signature pages anymore, mm -hmm. but to focus on a little bit higher value work. Yeah. But it's the stuff that we think like that, that gets adopted by the business units that are going to be your massive companies. Yeah. And I think from our end, all data starts with data that comes from legal agreements. Yeah. So why isn't the legal agreement at the start of all enterprise SaaS software? Yeah, absolutely. And then kind of flourish, hopefully, from there, right? Yeah. And, and then I'll just take this one more over. We talk a lot about the enterprise side. We don't talk a lot about the consumer side. Mm. But, you know, legal services, North Detroit, it, it's a massive market what's happening with lawyers. But what and kind of how much is spent on legal every year, but that's really just affecting the top 1% of people across the globe. Yes, yeah. And we think that technology can help with the other 99% of folks. And this is not something that's, um, it, it, it's almost like Greenfield and expanding the market size. Yeah. This isn't like putting attorneys out of business. This is being able to serve a customer that has not been able to be served before. Yeah. You know, we we we've made some investments in companies. Um, you know, we invest in a company called Solo Suit that helps people when they get sued by a debt collector mm. for five hundred dollars. Mm. You know, no lawyer wants to take a call saying, Hey, my whole case is worth five hundred dollars because the lawyer's gonna charge more than that. To... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, like we think there's a whole world that a whole world and a whole role that technology can play there as well. Yeah, I'm I'm um hopeful because to me it's one of the greatest promises of legal tech that it will actually help to solve the access to justice problem and of course I I understand that means that you've got to have access to tech to be able to do that yeah. but um it's, you know no, it's, it's happening and and, yeah. and we actually don't use like I know the term access justice gets used a lot we think about it in the terms of just like making legal services accessible to all absolutely with the difference being, um, you know, we're not going to be able to cure everybody's, you know, the, sure. with technology. But I think there is a cohort that could provide for some, you know, that, that if you get it right, I think these are not only helping people, but, you know, they're, they can be healthy businesses as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, Zach, um, unfortunately, I need to wrap up. But um, with that having been said, I can't, I can't leave without asking you a question about, you know, uh, what's on the radar screen for future investment in, it's, it's almost hard to pick the parameter now. So I'm going to say 12 months for the legal tech fund and why. So I told, this may not be as exciting as you'd like it to be, <laughs> but, I, but, but I mentioned um, that legal in general was behind on the software side. Yeah. So there are some areas where you see some crazy advanced artificial intelligence and other verticals. And then there are some spaces where actually creating some basic tools that enable workflow software mm -hmm. can really make a difference, yeah. you know, and, and that's the type of stuff that we are seeing right now. And we're watching, we look at this software and we're like, this makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. And then we see the customers adopting this software in big, and we're like, this just makes so much sense. Actually, in, in your neck of the woods, we made an investment in a company called Joseph Legal, and Tom and and Sam have kind of created some software that you just look at it, and you're like, this just makes so much sense. Like yeah. anybody can create their own workflows. <laughs> yeah. Anybody can essentially you know, build out their own document automation. And when I say anybody, I mean, like we do, like I did it myself. Mm. Like that was, you know, when we were looking at them, like I literally logged into the software, I built out our own workflows. And my guess is you're going to see us releasing some, you know, some interesting functionality for founders to mess around with built on top of their platform. Fantastic. And that wasn't built by like their team or developers that will be built by like Zach or Nate or Casey. Like, yeah. you know, we're built, we have, we're talking about like an internal contest, I like guess, yes. to who can build the coolest thing. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think it's a lot more. I, th I think there's I think there's huge opportunities for companies like that. Yeah. You know, that can just really do some neat things, basic workflows, but can change the way that, uh, that folks do business. Yeah. Joseph has been an absolutely amazing success story and 
they've been huge supporters and friends of the centre. So it's just absolutely wonderful to see that on so many different levels. Um, Zach, thank you so much for your time today. Really, really appreciate it. Good luck with the event at the end of the year. I know it's going to be amazing. And long may the Legal Tech Fund flourish and invest. Thanks so much. Th thank you so much.